There we are. And welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending March 6th, 2020. And let us begin with news of the final Evangelion film. What else? Um, we have news now that tomorrow, as of the recording of this, um, they're going to be streaming, ironically, on the Am official Amazon Prime Video YouTube channel? Uh, um, okay. They're going to be streaming, quote, the first 12 minutes, 10 seconds, and 10 frames of Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time. Yeah. Um, <sighs> That's so, how it's going to be released. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> Great. Um, there'll be a group watching campaign for the first three films. Um, well, there is a um, uh, group watching campaign that's been going on for the past couple of days, culminating with this one. Um, they're going to show that. And to be clear, um, the film is scheduled for release on Monday, the hmm. day after. So this is clearly kind of building people up to that that release. It will be um, uh, showing up in IMAX, MX4D, and 4DX stre uh, screenings. They will all start on that day as well. So my question to you all which might seem kind of obvious. What, why is that not working? One second. Ha ha. That's weird. Uh, oh, that's not working because of that. There we go. Um, why? Because we can't go by Saturday without one kind of thing happening. Oh, no, oh, you mean? No. <laughs> why? I don't know why they would throw a teaser out like that when the release general release is well. That's Monday the eighth mm -hmm. of March. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you, I think I would think you already have enough anticipation for the film, not as much as Moog and Train, but still a lot of anticipation for it. So, here's what I think: I think the general public is scared of Evangelion movies. I think the general public thinks that the final Evangelion movie is going to be end of Evangelion, that it's going to be a completely screwy, you know, weird film, and no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Same thought. <laughs> Everybody in uh, chat land is doing yeah, the same yeah, thing. Yeah. We're all clapping. Yeah, uh, Shinji. Uh. And so I think they're all, they all think that's going to be the tone of the film. And so I think if you stream it and show them the first couple of minutes of it, you say, no, that's not. I'm, obviously, it might go there. Um, I, 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 I will bet solid money there will be an applause scene somewhere just because that's who, what, who Otto is. Um, but I think it's to reassure the public. I also think it's Mugen Train. I think it's anything we can do to get more butts in seats, we will yeah. do to kickstart yeah. a Mugen Train. Well, that's the last 10 frames. It's just, it's not movement. It's just like you, a pair of hands that have come together clapping, and there that's it. You're like, oh, there it is. There's the clapping. Yeah, I mean, that that could be. I just... Yeah, that could be it. Because otherwise, that's, I mean, it's really... That would make good sense if you were doing something that was a franchise from 20 years ago and you're doing the reboot for as a movie and you're like, oh, right. we need to release a little bit of this to re for people to be like, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Forgot and then, and then remind people to right, bring them in. Pulls them know? in. It's like yeah. nobody's going to mi miss the fact that there's an Evangelion movie. So, yeah, you that might be you're trying to prime the pump to get them buy tickets mm -hmm. come on please yeah. I, yeah i'm sorry i just don't believe that's the end of course not no, it, it it's just be. not the of end it, not. It's, it's not the end there'll be whatever we, well again, they have to fight the battle on earth too we, we, again, we, we've said <laughs> there has already been a movie named the end of the end of the end yeah <laughs> yep no um i do think in in, in fairness in this will complete this story. I don't think Anno is going to troll us and say, oh, I've got, you know, three more movies planned or something. I do think this will wrap it up. Um, but I don't think this is the end of, of Evan Gunn's storytelling. At all. So the end of Nerve, and then it's going to be... <laughs> well, we know that Asuka, she's, she's come in to Shinji's world. So I guess you could wrap up Shinji's experience in life and then focus on other Eva units that are somewhere else in the world, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Something? Make that in more movies? I mean, we certainly already have two more pilots than we've had before. Right. Um, uh, and they're coming from other places. So, yeah, we could totally do that. Um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, and we've certainly seen, like you guys saw the uh, that short film of the little uh, pop trio girls. Um, so you, you can do that stuff. You can do other stuff in the world going on during all that. Um, well, it's like, it makes me think of like Strike Witches. You had mm-hmm. Strike Witches. They did a thing, and then it's like, oh, some characters got, you know, they aged out, etc. But it was very popular. So you got Brave Witches. And it was a whole, oh, there's another unit somewhere else. And now there's world witches, which is like, mm-hmm. oh, there are these other units that come together to be a different unit. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, here we yeah. go. I still love it. Don't get me wrong. But I could see Evangelion going with that. I do wonder if this will be um, – if I do wonder if we're reaching the end of Anno's like, active involvement in Evangelion. If he can like, pass on the reins at this point. I think actually that's right. I think that's – probably the most correct or the most sensible thing i, mm-hmm. I think it's it, like you're saying passing the baton on to somebody else because I, oh my god how many years has it been i mean how yeah. many how many chinchy crap can we get through yeah. you know and just not want to yeah. just find well, a, there, a tall there, tree limb in a noose i mean right. my god well I mean, are there interviews that it's like okay this is this is for me this the the end of me doing this because i'm tired of it i need to do other stuff even if there is i wouldn't trust it necessarily <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, uh you're really uh, I've, I've, i i have heard that i mean here's the problem every time he makes one of these he's like i'm done um but i think it's kind of like um Tomino, where you know he finishes what he's doing, and then Bandai comes back and goes, "No, no, 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 no! You're going to do another thing. That's going to happen now. You're going to make another. You're going to do another thing now because we need to make money." Um, <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> and so Miyazaki, I, I'm retiring. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and, which, and, and we have found out that a lot of that is Toshio Suzuki going back to Miyazaki and going, "So if you retire, we're all out of a job. So <laughs> just say it." Like, just, just say it. You're just putting all of our kids on the street starving. That's that's not just no, that's you. Just okay. take some time. Do your thing. You know, whatever it's makes okay. you happy. I'm just gonna eat my briefcase because I've got nothing else to go at all. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I think Anno has. Um, Anno also seems like he's at a point now where he doesn't. Um, uh, I want to say he doesn't need to go back to Evangelion. Um, which kind of like he said all he has to say. Right. Um, I feel like. Doing the movies, which is also kind of an idiot thing, um, but then also doing this, which is clearly, I don't know, going back and going, okay, here are my ideas. Like, here's what I would change about Evangelion if I had to do it over again. I'm, here is my do-over of the entire story, basically. Wow. Once you've done that, it's kind of like, okay, like I could do that again if I wanted to, but I've already done it once. Like, I don't need to do another remake, so I don't know. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, it's very interesting. Um, he, he's going to redo Evangelion, but only with plushies. I would not put that past him whatsoever. I would not put that past him. <laughs> I, team, I, team America, but yes, done with the, Evangelion. Yeah, yeah. puppets. Absolutely, Bun Rocket puppets. He he would do it. <laughs> um, yes, he would. He, I mean, he'd do Evangelion Ultraman. I mean, that would that's right down his alley. Oh, oh my god! Oh man. <laughs> Evangelion Jet Jaguar. Yes, you yes. ride inside Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar. Oh. Jet Jaguar. Oh. Ah. <laughs> there we go. You look like Jack Nicholson. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Mr. Science Theater. Coincidentally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, I mean, so for those who don't know, Anno was famous or infamous at college for going around and in the, like, in the quad redoing the Ultraman thing perfectly. Like frame for frame, he knew exactly how the whole Ultraman thing went. Yeah, so it's wow. like, wow, hmm, you know, <laughs> you like that thing. Um, anyway, speaking of movies that are coming out soon, but more uh, closer to home, the Violet Evergarden movie mm. is finally coming to U.S. theaters on March 30th, so just a few weeks away. Now, Funimation is bringing that out. It'll screen in Japanese with English subtitles. Um, ticket sale, tickets will go on sale March 19th, so I have a little um, ways to wait on that. No other information available that I'm aware of. Um, FYI, the film ranked at number two when it opened in Japan uh, on its opening weekend. Um, it was also the first new Japanese anime film to open in Dolby Cinemas. 
uh, oh. which was um, kind of kind of interesting. Yeah. So um, yes, that is a thing coming out. Fairly recent film again, September, um, and it's the first new killer animation thing we've had in a long time. Yeah. At this point, I just want to see a movie in a movie theater. Yeah. So. <laughs> that i want to spend 2250 for a ticket and popcorn yes, yes. <laughs> that's the thing you bring a trench coat and you put it all in the trench coat you know your candy and your, your stuff i would never suggest such a thing amc who's constantly watching <laughs> yeah, yes that has never been done by me no and i would no. not condone such a thing mm -hmm. ever ever yeah. ever Oh, man. Send I'm... me free tickets to Mugen Train, and I'll dark on everybody <laughs> I know. Oh, okay. Quick story time. I distinctly remember going to um, Free movie tickets for narking people yeah. in? Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I must have been eight, nine, ten years old, and the giant uh, store used to have binned candy. Okay. So you'd go in with scoops and scoop out and get, you know, whatever. And my parents would take me there before the movie and we would get bags of candy and like Reese's pieces and all that kind of stuff right. and like put it in our coats Yep. and then go to the movie theater and I remember like asking my parents saying is this really okay that we're bringing this in yeah it's fine just don't worry about it just, it's, it's okay they, they, they don't mind you know I mean, going afterwards like, say oh. nothing <laughs> You know, my parents are very upstanding people, very, you know, do the right thing. But on, on that, they're like, eh, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's that's right that gray my, area. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my, my grandmother would do that. when when Actually, when we saw The Rescuer, she actually made oh, the popcorn at home and put it wow. in Ziploc bags. And then she put it in her purse. And then we'd go in. She'd be like, all right, here you go. And we're like, okay. We just took it. You know, I didn't know I ever shoved a popcorn in my mouth watching Disney. You know, that's that's sweet, because when I'd go, I'd just sit next to people who had a big tub of popcorn, and I'd eat it out of their tub and just stare really intensely at them. Mm -hmm. And when they said nothing, I just kept eating it. I, I thought it was okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Intimidation for popcorn. It works every time. I'm just going to have some of your popcorn, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there are directions I can go with that, which I'm not. Sure. <laughs> um, it's not past ten. This it, is very, very true. Um, another movie potentially coming, um, but a rather different one, also still close to home. Amazon Studios has announced that they are planning to make a live-action Helsing movie. Yeah. Um, again, Amazon, not Netflix, because everyone assumes it's Netflix doing it. <clears throat> um, the writer of John Wick. Oh, is going to be involved. Yeah, it makes sense. It yeah. very much makes sense. Um, he's also a different producer on Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, a bunch of other people are credited as producers as usual. That's about all we know so far. Live action film of Helsing. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah I saw that an announcement on like ANN about that. I was just like, I, and I thought for a second, I'm like, oh no, this is going to be like the sci-fi channel version of Helsing. <laughs> no, no. And then There's I saw no the John, John Wick connection. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, I'm at least now 50%. <laughs> well, here's my thing about that. I'm, I, I, I'm like, I love Helsing and it's just, I, anyway. So hearing that and believe and this is the first time I heard it, I'm, I'm like so excited now. I'm like, going, yay, yay. Although I'm trying to figure out how much blood is going to be right. in this thing because the anime is just blood from top rivers. to bottom. They, it, it, there it just, will be rivers. It, it just might as well be CGI. just a red, red screen yep. Yep. with people talking because that's kind of how it is. CGI makes it easy. Oh, yeah. But but to have John uh, the, the people from John Wick involved in – makes so much sense yeah for the physical stuff that's going to happen now i wonder if they're going to go with the original story which might be easier i don't know or if they're going to go with the whole nazi zeppelin thing and it's a movie <coughs> so movie, yeah. you know they're going to have to kind of figure out what how much story to tell there yeah have that much time yeah i have not seen much of helsing i've seen i think the first episode of the original tv series loved it just haven't gone back to it yet um i will say from what i've seen and what i've been exposed to that Helsing does feel like one of those anime that lends itself to live action more than others. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of characters, in terms of it has that sort of Hollywood action movie kind of vibe to an extent of being yeah. right. kind of uh, um, yeah, like that. So I, yeah, I th- I th- I think it's a it's a good choice of many. Which yeah. I think. If you have the original series, or you have the what if you were saying, Steve, the whole Nazi zombie kind of thing, it's like, let's talk about the Hellboy movies, yeah. and let's talk about the universal bankability of like the Germans as a bad guy. Mm-hmm. So that wouldn't surprise me if that yep. was the vein they took, because like that's yeah. it's we're talking Hollywood, we're talking mm-hmm. you know box office, we're talking let's do something that people can lock into one part of this while we're introducing a new franchise to them. So. But here's the thing, though, this isn't Hollywood. It's well, it's Amazon. It's Amazon. It's Amazon, but it's still so, still yeah, a Hollywood I, I, machine. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 t- I take your point, um, but it is interesting that, that Amazon, because because Amazon's big thing has been doing long series. It's been doing you know, uh, Mayor of the High Castle, things right. like that. You know, uh, Maisie, all that stuff. Which also had Nazis. It's, it also had Nazis. Um, <laughs> so, you can reuse the uniforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. synergy. Um, I'm just surprised Amazon. Yeah. Why do they keep doing this? Well, I mean, they did. Um, what was the Will Smith movie that people kind of. Uh, um, Independence Day? Uh, no. <laughs> um, no. Not the, that the, far back. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The uh, orcs in modern world. Oh, um, the name something? The bright, what? light, something light, something. Uh, let me just see. Bright. Right, yeah. Right. right, that was it. Um, yeah. Let me just double check. So it's it's set in L.A. Will Smith is a cop, and there's yeah. gang. And instead of gangs, it's gangs of orcs versus elites who are elves, and then there's fairies. And then so, there's <laughs> when, the, when the hell did this come out? <laughs> elves and orcs are white and black. Black. It's it's Keep, a, you know groups. It, it's a racial poorly group. veiled metaphor. Yeah. Poorly uh, veiled. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it was Netflix, actually, so I was wrong. Yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that was. We told y'all we need, y'all you <laughs> need to know. You never People reacted to, see to that this. Movie. Yeah. There, I, would <laughs> I would imagine. I would imagine. Which could probably have driven viewership, but the hate mail must have been yeah, monumental. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that's the thing. It's a, and you know, I wouldn't be surprised Netflix doing that because you know, again, fantasy, you know, whatever. Right. Um, but it's interesting that Amazon is taking that on. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of surprised. But, and and this is not I'm not you know a a, a greater diverse uh, uh, participation of mm-hmm. of sources you know these kind of things that's good. It drives uh, some interesting projects in in the market. Um, but I just I, I'm just kind of curious. Netflix they do this thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Media companies do these things. And Amazon, why do you need to do this thing? You already have Kindle books. And you have all these yeah. other functions that you need to do. Why are you jumping into this? Well, remember, you know, they licensed a lot of anime back in the day. Right. Yeah. Um, so what, five years ago, they were like, stepping up the license to anime. They stopped doing that. But to give you an idea, when I search anime on Amazon Prime Video, they have Lupin the Third, right. Vinland Saga, Avatar, Naruto, hmm. Blade of the Immortal, Girls Last Tour, um, wow. bunch of Pokemon and so forth. Blue Sub Six. Um, they have Memories. They have Cowboy Bebop, Jinro the Wolf Brigade, Ghost Stories. Um, whole bunch of stuff on here. They're, Interesting. Yeah, they're, they're they have Shiki Yugi. Um, they have always Weird. like chosen. Wisely, <laughs> right? Where it's like those, yeah, those are things that a variety of people will like. There's some classics, a bunch of stuff in there. They have a freaking area. Um, but you know, that's like for prime streaming or whatever mm-hmm. else. You know what I mean, like I, that part I get, but you know, instead of you know saying, "Hey, Netflix, you guys got the cameras, you guys got the sets, you do mm-hmm. your thing." And you broadcast, and we're going to sign like a sub license, and then have it for sale on DVD and li- Prime Limited for thirty days, and then we'll sell the DVDs and other things. You know what I mean? Something like that versus saying, "Well, we're just going to go in and jump in and do a series and pay yeah. for that." Yeah, interesting. It's a yeah, choice. it definitely is. Um, and that's the other thing is I don't know what else they've done. I I, I get the feeling yeah. there's been like one or two other announcements of Amazon, you know, funding something. Yeah, but I can't remember what. 
is this the the broad new horizon that's dawning or is this like eh we'll just right. keep do, do one or two things here and there and see what happens and it's also could be one of those things too where again um who knows how long this has been circulating where maybe like this the john wick writer has been wanting to do a helsing movie for a while and it's sort of shopping it around and folks are like no 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 and amazon was like yes like that's gonna work we want to do that we'll take it i don't know hmm. who knows? either that or amazon has a secret otaku base <laughs> where the 10 most otaku sit and they go amazon you will do this mm-hmm. you will do that the overlords of otaku oh, <laughs> great apple seed or, or Bezos was feeling very saucy that day. I was like, I think I'll just throw $100 million at something. The next man that, or woman that walks through that door, $100 million. Hi, can we do a Helsing? $100 million. <laughs> Thanks. Although, given anime, it's like one. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, speaking of Netflix, though, um, quick uh, news item. I said quick news item. Quick, quick. Quick news. There we go. Jeez. Um, we got a confirmation today that the new Shaman King anime is coming to U.S. Netflix. Um, or at least to Netflix. An English subtitled promo video for the new TV anime came out. Um, it did uh, list that it was coming to Netflix in 2021. What's interesting about that is we know it's coming to Japanese television April 1st. So that implies that it is actually going to be streaming on Netflix and it's not going to be you know the same date, so they want to kind of shift it away and, and not let folks know that. Um, but yeah, um, the new Shaman King coming to Netflix, which I think is kind of interesting because it is a pretty high-profile property um, for Netflix to kind of snap up. I never really got into the Shaman uh, anime. It, it wasn't that I didn't mm-hmm. like it or anything like that. It's, it's just one of the things of like of all the things in the world that yeah, I was yeah, in, yeah. in at the time that that just didn't come on my on mm-hmm. my plate. Um, I you know I think I I I, I would like I, I would like the idea of it because simply because I think there's at this point a lot of stuff that seems to be kind of formulaic. And, and kind of and Shaman King always seemed a little different to me mm-hmm. um, in, yeah. in terms of style and, and actually that's one of the one of the things I liked about it of what little I watched was the actual animation style of yeah. it. and it was Great. pretty interesting so totally um, well, so I, I let's only learned about it from from Brent talking about it so yeah. I, I'm, I'll be curious to see how this turns out yeah. that's volumes 1 through 17 on my shelf to give you guys an idea yeah out there, um, this is a, a thing I very much enjoyed, and I've always felt it was kind of the 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 lost shonen series that just kind of came out at the wrong time, didn't find its audience, um, but really had potential. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm hopeful. You know, there's always the fear of the Netflix ghetto, but yeah. um, if nothing else, I do think this will give it an audience and a platform um, uh, of its own. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. At least it'll be anime and not live action. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I, I have been scarred by Death Note. Netflix is Death Note. Fair. I'm just yeah. Kidding. Yeah. Very fair. Um, well, um, one other news item before we get to all the anime announced this week. And boy, <laughs> there's a big old list. Um, Hooray! But, yeah. But a, a news item that will shock absolutely no one. Um, anime Expo has announced that they are not doing a physical event. The funny thing about this is that the news first broke because um, the uh, an information packet was was posted by the Los Angeles Convention and Tourism Development Board of Commissioners, yeah, oh. which basically listed what's coming to the convention center. Oh boy! And they yeah. listed that Anime Expo was going to be a virtual event on there. And Anime Expo came out and said, "So yeah, uh, we're not actually hosting a, a live event this year. We're going to go all virtual." It's like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. That said, um, A, they'll do a virtual event over the 4th of July, and the information packet stated that Anime Expo had, was in the process of signing their license agreement through 2030. So they're pretty what? committed to the convention center. <laughs> um, but yes, and to be clear, the document did not state it was canceled. They just said, you know, basically Anime Expo, parentheses, virtual event, and parentheses, so clearly. 
Um, and for context, one of the reasons wow. they often have to do this is because um, sometimes they can still use the physical event right. to like stream from. They can have like, right. people on stage and do things from the event. It's just not going to be a you know open to the public kind of thing. Do right. their cosplay contest on a stage, like with people or something? Probably not. No, I probably not. Know. It's it's probably going to be all the releases and then yeah. the panels and then yeah. it's and it's going to be an empty room so you, with you, them you, up you there. You can pull one person on stage. They'll do their thing. They walk off. Somebody else can come on, and that's the you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what you do for the cosplay. One cosplayer comes in, gets judged. Have, out you do, out you go. You have to stage them though. <laughs> You have, you know, 10,000 people. <laughs> 10 feet apart, you're fine. Yeah. Out the door, Actually, around the block. There, you could do that. You're absolutely right. There's enough space. That's a good point. Because um, like, if you cut out the audience portion of it, you could line the, uh, everywhere that there would normally be people. You could just line them up and around, mm-hmm. get them there five seconds in front of the camera with three judges socially distant, and then, like, thank you very much. Out the door, we'll call you. Out the door, call you. Bye. Bye. We'll text you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. It's like Triad. Triad announced, you know, a few weeks ago that they they've iced the Triad um, con that was supposed to be in March. Yep. Yep. Otacon, we still don't know what they're going to do. And X, X is again early July, so we have a little ways to wait. Yeah. So, as far as the Otacon goes, mm-hmm. um, this is kind of the decision that they're waiting. for. These are the kind of decisions that they're yeah. waiting for. So yeah. it's it's going to be up to Otacon probably within the next. If they're going to shut it down, it'll probably be in the next two or three weeks that they'll make a decision out of it. I expose not doing it. Yep. If Comic Con's also not going to do it, which they're not, yeah, then you know, Otacon may make it a different decision. The the um, the convention center as it is now down in DC is being used as a max vaccination site. Mm. Um, so um, that in itself doesn't really mean anything in terms of impacting Otacon in any way, shape, or form, as opposed to what it did last year, which was become bed space yeah, for right. COVID infected people. So that's that's a little bit different. So it's kind of really up to Otacon what what they're gonna want to do. But these are things that they're gonna look at because you know it, it's just like with theaters. What happened in my theater last year, which is. We didn't want to be the first one to, to cancel, but we didn't want to be the last jerk to go, okay, fine, we're not going to do it either. Yeah. But, you know, they. But you need somebody big to say, we're not going to do it. It also depends on how much money Otacon has. Right. And whether they can, like, you know, afford I to... Actually, afford to, afford to do it. Yeah. 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 So we'll see how that so, all shakes out. Now, now, the upside could be that everyone who was going to go to the expo might turn around and go, Otacon, here's our money. Yeah. You know, just, who knows? Yeah, if it becomes the one big anime convention of the year. That could be yeah. massive. Totally. Oh, it, everybody would want to be at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. but I didn't get up at that. They would. They. I don't even know how many people they would allow in. Mm. I'm, I'm right. thinking less than ten, ten thousand. Mm. I don't. They probably have an hourly. You're yeah. allowed to be here from like 8 a.m. to noon, mm. then get out. <laughs> you guys are noon to four. Oh, man. Oh, that would suck. Recipe <laughs> for disaster. Disaster. Right there. Yeah. Boy. Well, just a, it'll be a riot. Good. I mean, not a funny riot. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. Like a burning things down and people like punching folks. Can you imagine, riot. Can you but, imagine uh, that on CNN and get another riot? But these people look different. <laughs> All the bronies oh, fighting the like, years <laughs> here. It's interesting. Oh yeah. my goodness, we, we're not sure what the big yellow thing is, or the the guy in boxes that says Pocky. We're not sure yeah, about that, or yeah. or you know, apparently the swords are real this year. I, I mean, <laughs> we we we. Oh my have gosh, a, they have a giant. Oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, why is there a Gundam fighting a Pikachu? <laughs> Very weird. <laughs> I had a great moment um, at this was at Oticon a couple of years ago where um, I was out front and there was a Deadpool going by. This was just before the movie was going to come out, so hype level was high. Um, and he he was out doing his thing, and then somebody in a full size Pikachu costume, you know, walks by, and they wave at each other, and Deadpool just went over and hugged Pikachu. And he's got this photo of Deadpool hugging Pikachu, and it was just the sweetest <laughs> thing in the world. Um, it's the most ridiculous, ridiculous. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to say, and then and Deadpool turned around, pushed, and pulled out. Of... 
Pikachu, I cap you. What? Yeah. Okay, so in the chat, we're getting a whole nostalgia thing about how much anime used to cost. And you're speaking my language here. Um, in 1994, 11 years old, Roger Aiko for 42.95, I believe. Oh, that. yeah. Um, yep. Subbed because the dub versions were twenty dollars yeah. cheaper. Uh huh. That's yep. exactly right. Um, oh yeah, and that was back when you could get you know anime just like in the in the racks at like Comp USA. Yeah. Um, just okay. Yeah. Here, here, here's Akira. Just fine. It's okay. Ninja Scroll. Sure. It's cartoons it's for kids. It's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Ninja Scroll is cute. Yeah. Yeah, snakes. Everyone it's like snakes. Warner Bill Brothers. Susie will it's love fine. this. Go ahead. <laughs> you like the cartoon stuff, don't you? Here yeah, you go. Yeah, go. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Five year old Susie. It's like like... It's totally harmless. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. She'll learn a lot. Um, yeah. The uh, oh, thankfully I never saw some of the more adult stuff there, but I saw some stuff. I'm like, I would not show that to kids. Anyway. Mind game. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, subs were were definitely more expensive. Usually about about ten bucks, five ten bucks. Um, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a thing. And for for those un, unclear, and we'll go back to the news here in a second. This is why there were sub dub wars because you had yeah. to choose. You could not build up a collection with both. Um, it was so too expensive. Yeah, it was too expensive. And yeah, the you money had... you would save on getting the the dub, <clears throat> you could. You know, a number of things that you bought, you would actually get a sub for the cost of what you had saved. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. Um, it was a big thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A series of two hundred bucks and half your shelf. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's, that's yep. that was the, that was the case. In fact, oh, it's not in here anymore. Um, I think I have in the other room a um, a, a box set of Lotus War, and it's like oh, wow. this big <laughs> VHS tapes. It's like it's it's wow. huge. A friend of mine gave it to me. Um, like, yeah, that's that the thing. Well, I bought the World at War on oh. VHS. <laughs> oh, Jesus! All of World War Two is VHS. It's big. <laughs> wow, but, it's like a yeah. room. Yeah, but the, so, know, I, so I got. I want my MTV what you do. VHS. Nice. Oh, yes. okay. With with the first Dennis Leary sketch with the uh, Doug Barr and Cindy uh, Crawford rant. That wow. Did. And um, I think I paid, uh, yeah, 35 bucks for that. Wow. Back in the day. Now it's it'll be in some dude's bin for like 50 cents or <laughs> pay me 25 cents and I'll light it on fire for you because <laughs> nobody can play it anymore. Or $40,000 because it's rare. Yeah, yeah right. Know. I'm waiting for my Clash of the Bionoids to be worth that mm. on the <laughs> Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay, that uh, that that should be a real winner at some point. I'm wondering when fan traded tapes become a collector's item. Oh my god! Like the the ninety five nineteen ninety five yeah. Kiki's Delivery Service fan sub that somebody did like because this was a thing. Um, I think it was the Kiki's uh, that, uh, was one of the first things that, that that was like subbed fan subbed by a guy who like had a complete subtitling deck at work. And Ooh. so he could do it because that's the only way you could do it back in the mid '90s. You didn't have software. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so that got traded around a little bit, and I'm like, man, that would I, boy, that must be rare. I wonder what my my Macross the movie like Ooh. fan VHS and my Akira fan VHS yeah. would be worth. <laughs> Everything has value. I'm entertaining bids for one hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going yes. to buy Anime Island, full of nothing but <laughs> anime and cat girl yes. stuff. Was <laughs> the thing you were talking about a video, a taco Land? Video? Yeah, yeah, yeah Otaku Otaku Land, Otaku yep. Land. There you go. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a series of small, dark cubicles with monitors. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's like a dream, <laughs> but not that kind of dream. A taco <laughs> dream. There we go. Mm, um, it's not past ten. <laughs> back to the news. Um, and time for a new segment, Anime Announcements Corner, because, oh my gosh, this is a whole thing, uh, because there's a lot to talk about. Um, so, we're getting another new anime in the Aria franchise. Yeah. Those familiar with Aria the Natural, Aria the All the Other Things. Um, this is the 15th anniversary of Aria, 
And so um, I think it may have been last year, moving into this year. And um, so there's a there's a special screening of Arya the Crepuscolo, which was a new theatrical um, uh, anime film. And they revealed a new anime franchise called Arya the Benedizione, uh, which will be the third and final project in the uh, in the series they're calling the Blue Curtain Call, which is this sort of celebration, fifteen year celebration. Oh, um, molto Arya. grazie, amici. <laughs> Molte grazie. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's it coming to go? So you have uh, Aria the Avenir and Aria the Crepuscolo, and now we have Aria the Benedizione. Um, no news on format or whatever, except that um, Crepuscolo was a film, so probably something along those lines. Um, so cool. I mean, Aria is one of those franchises that's kind of been around for a long time, and it was kind of dormant, and now more stuff. Cool. Let's say it's very interesting. I made it through the first episode and I thought, well, this is just lovely. I, I have other things to watch at the moment, but mm-hmm. I might get back to this. It's really very gentle. Mm-hmm. It's very gentle. Yeah. So I'm surprised that they've, 15 years, they've now revived it again. That's good. Yeah. Doesn't give me the Eurocamp good vibe, but still, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. cool. And very much in that sort of healing, relaxing yeah. kind of a vibe. Totally. Yeah. Um, speaking of older series getting come back, uh, slightly older, uh, The Devil's a Part-Timer is getting a second season. Yes! Woo! Who knew? Um, that Eight anime... years later. Yeah, I was just going to say, that, that's, it's been a little while. Um, um, everyone's coming back, so all the voice actors, all that kind of stuff is coming back, apparently. Wow, um, cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, interestingly, the key visual looks a little bit different. Um, yeah. they may be changing up the character designs a little bit this time around. Um, so that would be kind of interesting to see. Um, they don't look bad, just a little, little different visually. They don't um, look eight years older at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shocking, isn't that? Um, Boy, yeah, what so... a callback that must have been. Like, <laughs> hello? You're like, hey, do you remember that thing you did a while ago? Can you do it again? Mm-hmm. Like, sure. Do you, are you going to pay me more than scale this time? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it's well. just like reliving the past of it. <laughs> I love the Christmas Freeman thing, you know. Would you would you do this role? Do voice actors like getting paid? Yes. Yes. So <laughs> yes, I would do that role. You know? Um there is a there's gonna be a new season of the regular magical high school as well. Um, this will be the Reminiscence Arc. And it's focusing on his sister now, Mewtwo. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, versus on on him as the as the main protagonist, Kun. Uh, yeah, okay. It's going to be his sister. It's going to focus on. Gotcha. Okay. So th- I mean, they've my initial complaint about the irregular Magic High was they just kept going to different competitions, okay. and so they did a better job than most at interweaving the underlying story with it. Mm-hmm. But it's just you know still a lot of competition kind of stuff. I liked the visitor arc, which was this past season. Okay where they finally just put the competition stuff to the side Mm -hmm. and focused on more of the central portion of the city and how, you know, his unusual talents at designing these devices to focus magic fits into the larger geopolitical scape. Ah, And it's like, there's interesting stuff that's going on. So I'm very curious to see where they're going to take it with his sister because it's not like she's just kind of a stand outside of the crowd thing and he's the central focus. She is a, a, a an integral part of the things that their family is connected to. Mm, okay. So I'll be very curious to see where they're going to run with that one. Cool. Um, I just to say I misspoke. Um, there is a new anime. They haven't said if it's a series or what. So it could be a movie, it could be OBA, whatever. Right. Um, but we'll find out. It's cool. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Um, no big surprise, Misfitted Demon King Academy, getting a second season as well. Um, Rent a Girlfriend, also getting a second season. Yeah, I heard that. Which, I, you know, I didn't think that was popular enough to get a second season, but... Well, you know, it's the refund season. <laughs> okay, I, 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 would, I, would, I would watch sorry. that. I would definitely watch that. <laughs> It's the emotional trauma lawsuit season. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, I mean, it, it. there's a lot to wrap up there, obviously. There's a lot of loose ends that they just sort of didn't deal with. And it's anime. 
So the likelihood is it never will. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? That's that I'm surprised there's a second season too. So maybe they will move this along being like, well, we kind of lucked out with a second season. So maybe we're going <sighs> to not wrap it. So that the manga or light novel can't do its thing, but we're going to bring the anime part of it to like some kind of resolution that lets it fade off while we move on with things. That would be very nice. Wouldn't have passed them, but I agree it would be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on to completely new anime coming, uh, the girl from the other side. Manga is getting a feature length OVA, basically. Um, mm. For those who um, aren't familiar, um, uh, uh, the girl from the other side, Cyril Arun, um, is a manga series about a young girl that lives with a like a a monster creature, um, sort of a a tall black figure with these big horns. Um, uh, off in the forest, um, very fairy tale ask not fairy tale the anime, a fairy tale like the Grimm's fairy tales kind of thing. Um, very you know, a lot of dark forests and and things along those lines. Um, Didn't we have Somali to something or other? Mm-hmm. Um, this is more, um, whereas that is more about the world. This is more about sort of. Uh, I read the first volume. Um, It's not a post-apocalyptic world. Nope. Okay. And it, it, it's more of a fairy tale. It's more like a Brothers Grimm kind of a story. Okay. And I will say, like, in the sense that, like, it wears its themes very much on its sleeves. Like, it's very clear. This is about this thing. And we're going to tell a story about this, you know, this moral, right? It's going to okay. be very strongly uh, woven through the story. All right. Okay. Um, gotcha. Yeah, so that, that kind of a thing. So that's getting, uh, um, again, feature-length original anime, you know, uh, which will be bundled with a bonus volume of the manga because that's how that works. Um, but it's shipping on March 10th, so it's coming out really soon. Dang. That's pretty Four cool. days from now. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, we're also getting an anime adaptation of The Greatest Demon Lord is Reborn as a Typical Nobody. Um, basically, yeah. Uh, Demon <laughs> Lord is reincarnated, um, but then uh, turns out he's reborn thousands of years later as a villager with no powers whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, despite having cast this spell to like get like, all this stuff back, um, but his memories are intact, so who knows where that's going to go? Um, uh, the fact that there are two buxom cute girls in the cover tells me where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's coming. I think we all have an idea there. And then um, Sabakui Bisco is getting an anime adaptation. If you have not seen the trailer for this, please do. Um, it's got, like, thrash metal on it. Um, it is a post-apocalyptic shonen series full of crazy visuals, um, a mushroom sprouting in the middle of a city, um, two characters kiss, and then one of them pulls a bug out of the other one's mouth. It is everything all at once. I am so in. It's Um, Doro Hey Doro, done different. Yeah, that, that, that kind of a general vibe. Sounds Ow, like okay. college. <laughs> um, clearly, Art couch ahoy. <laughs> <laughs> um, clearly, they have thrown kind of all the wildest stuff into the trailer, but yeah. it does feel like it's going to be a really wild ride, very very imaginative. Think again, I would say, in the shonen realm, more like, I would say, you know how like One Piece can kind of go crazy, can kind of go sort of over the top, um, fairy tale can too, kind of more, more of that kind of, kind of line. JoJo? <laughs> Yeah, actually, although more in the, in the kind of the world building sense of just kind right. of crazy world, but okay. I don't know. Um, We're gonna find out exactly. Um, it is set in a world where a rusting wind has caused all of the um, the metal in the world to rust, basically, and is corroding everything. <clears throat> uh, people live in fear of the rust corroding their cities. Um, a boy from the Mushroom Guardian tribe embarks on a lo- uh, journey with a cute girl. To save his dying teacher, um, so that kind of a story. Um, definitely some Nausicaa vibes in it too. Like they're 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 not hiding that. <laughs> yeah, it it sounds like that. Oh god, what was the name of that cyborg anime? It wasn't cy It wasn't cyborg. Oh oh nine. It was um, Catcher. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where that. where it's, where um, it's that kind of like end of the world. Like things are running down and. And, and just stopping. Quiet Country Cafe? 
yeah. We're going to get Faye with, with um, really weird things happening, I guess. Rock and roll and crazy. Yeah. Post- yeah. Ah, <laughs> ah, 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 ah. I would, College. Yeah. yeah. Someone needs to make a Quack Country Cafe AMV set to like thrash metal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd nice. sense a challenge. I, yeah. <laughs> the gauntlet's been thrown down, Steve. Exactly. What are you going to do? <laughs> also this week, a few news items just worth mentioning. Don't know if we'll go into much detail about them. Uh, the final Gintama film did come out. It is called... <laughs> Gintama, the final film, and it earned uh, 16.3 million U.S. dollars on its opening weekend. Very nice, uh, which is a franchise record for Gintama. Did very, very well. Um, Shinji Takeuchi, the uh, character designer, chief animation director, drew an illustration in celebration of the milestone, uh, opening number one in Japan on January 8th, and finally ending Mugen Train's 12 consecutive weekends at number one in the box office. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. It is, it is based on the finale of the manga uh, and is very much that kind of uh, wrap-up of the story. Wow. So, congratulations, Gintama. Um, finally, just wanted to mention this because it, it came across the feed. Kaiju number 8 is a manga series about a, um, a working guy who gets the ability to turn into a kaiju, basically. Um, um, it, had, it now has one million copies in print, although not, not all have necessarily sold. Um, as of Thursday's release of the second volume. Um, so it's doing wow. really well, yes. This is the fastest uh, manga in Shonen Jump Plus, the website, uh, to reach this milestone ever. Um, wow. And, uh, and, and Shueisha has made it clear, these are physical copies. These, they're, they're not counting digital copies, just physical copies, one million. Wow. Out there. So, yeah. If you're curious, if, if you'd like to get ahead of the game on Shonen anime coming out, might want to pick up a copy of Kaiju number eight because that sounds like something that will get get adapted into anime sooner or later. Um, sounds like a really uh, really fun stuff. It was and launched this... last July. Wow. Yep. And this is where we we hear about the <clears throat> super secret uh, market plan, like the uh, GameStop thing, <laughs> where somebody in like Sapporo is like. <laughs> I'd like to order one million copies. <laughs> Boys, get the warehouse yeah. ready. <laughs> oh, my gosh, they all went out. Yes, to my warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know how this market manipulation works. Exactly. You know, totally. Uh, yeah, so that's all the news for the week. Thank you for watching. We will see you all next week. Um, people are talking about.